Mr. President. I'm here to apply to your Texas Law School program. You want to be admitted here to UT Law? <laughs> yes. I don't think that's going to be a good idea. Why? You're African American and you don't take African Americans. But according to the Equal Protection Clause, I have the right to attend this university or any other. I don't think I can help you. Well, I'm I'll take you to court. I'll see you in court then. Hello, Judge. I'm here because I was denied the right to be accepted to University of Texas Law School because of my ethnicity. Your Honor, there is no school in Texas that has to enroll an African-American student. We should not have to be the first. Mr. President, you have the option of establishing a law school for African-Americans within six months or allow this gentleman to enroll in your facility. We will reconvene in six months. Thank you. Hi, I'm Alicia Henderson. And I'm Janelle Andoni. And this is Sweat vs. Painter. Sweat vs. Painter was a U.S. Supreme Court case that successfully challenged the separate but equal doctrine of racial segregation established by the 1896 case Plessy v. Ferguson. The case was influential in the landmark case of Brown v. Board of Education four years later. The case involved a black man, Heman Marion Sweat, who was refused admission to the School of Law of University of Texas, whose president was Theophilius Painter, on the grounds that Texas the Texas state constitution prohibited integrated education. At the time, no law school in Texas would admit black students. The state district court in Travis County, instead of granting the plaintiff a writ of mandamus, continued the case for six months. The allowed the, this allowed the state time to create a law school only for black students, which it established in Houston, Texas, rather than in Austin. The separate law school and college became the Thurgood Marshall School of Law at Texas Southern University, known then as Texas State University for Negroes. The trial court decision was affirmed by the Court of Civil Appeals, and the Texas Supreme Court denied writ of error on further appeal. Sweat and the NAACP next went to the federal courts, and the case ultimately reached the U.S. Supreme Court. W.J. Durham and Thurgood Marshall presented Sweat's case. The Supreme Court reversed the lower court decision, saying that the separate school failed to qualify, both because of quantitative differences in facilities and intangible factors, such as its isolation from most of the future lawyers with whom its graduates would interact. The court held that when considering graduate, graduate education, intangibles must be considered as a part of substantive equality. The documentation of the court's decision includes the following differences identified between black and white facilities. The University of Texas Law School had 16 full-time and three part-time professors, while the black law school had five full-time professors. The University of Texas Law School had 850 students and a law library of 65,000 volumes, while the black law school had 23 students and a library of 16,500 volumes. The University of Texas Law School had moot court facilities, an order of the COIF affiliation, and the numerous graduates involved in public and private law practices, while the Black Law School had only one practice court facility and only one graduate admitted to the Texas Bar. So that's our case, Sweat Painter. Thanks for watching. <laughs>